Hello ladies and gentlemen, Kirito before here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Sikorsky C837 Mojave. The Sikorsky C837 Mojave was an American large heavy lift helicopter in the 1950s. The helicopter at the time was the largest helicopter in the western world and it was Sikorsky's first twin engine helicopter. It featured two Pratt & Whitney, Whitney R2800 double wasp radical engines that were mounted on op outboard pods that also contained the retractable landing gear. This left the fuselage free for cargo which could be loaded and unloaded through large cam shell doors in the nose. So the doors of the uh, fuselage would be able to open up in the nose and open out wide so that the, view so that the uh, aircraft could carry up to 3 lightweight jeeps or up to 26 troops. Uh, for storage, the main blades uh, folded back on the fuselage and the tall uh, rotor mass folded forward on the fuselage. The CH-37 was one of the last helicopters to use the piston engines, which were larger, heavier, and less powerful than the turboshaft engines. Uh, and later on, the helicopter did not see a very long service life uh, due to the fact that the uh, capabilities of this helicopter were very inferior to the turboshaft helicopters that were starting to be entered into service. Uh, however, four uh, CH-37s were deployed to Vietnam in 1963 to assist in the recovery of downed U.S. aircraft. They were very successful at this role, recovering over uh, $7.5 million uh, worth of equipment, some of which was retrieved from behind enemy lines. The CH-37 was also used to recover spy satellite film capsules descending from space by parachute. Uh, so overall, the CH-37 uh, Mojave was a very interesting helicopter. It's got that very interesting shape to it. A lot of the helicopters during the Cold War, like the early stages, Vietnam, Korean War, had a lot of interesting shapes to them. Uh, some like shaped like bananas, and this one is like a giant flying pickle, basically. Uh, overall, it's a really interesting helicopter and has a you know kind of sad history of not seeing be able to see much service due to the fact of you know just basically new technology putting it out of action and uh, dampering its uh, capabilities. Overall, it's still a really cool helicopter and uh, it's really fun to build and uh, will hopefully be fun to build as a tutorial and for you guys to all enjoy. Uh, this helicopter is probably the most um, known for its uh, service in Vietnam, I would say, with the fact that only four CH-37s were able to cover up to recover up to $7.5 million worth of equipment. That's pretty uh, surprising. That's, pretty, uh, that's a pretty good uh, ratio, I would say, for sure. So... Uh, definitely a really cool helicopter and definitely deserves some love. So hopefully we, uh, or I'm glad we can finally give this helicopter some love on the channel. Uh, anyways, uh, going ahead and taking a look at the helicopter, we have both a landed version and in-flight version. So obviously with the landed version, it's uh, just like the in-flight version, except the rotors are kind of dipped downwards, the weighted rotors. And we also have the landing gear, which comes from the um, engine pods that you can see right here. So... Uh, the thing that makes this helicopter really unique is the fact that it has these engine pods that stick out to the sides. Um, it's definitely unique, to say the very least, um, but it's also really cool. I like it because it's really unique with the helicopter. Um, so you have the landing gear here on both sides of the helicopter that come down from these pods, um, which are really cool, and uh, the weighted blades and stuff, but that's pretty much the main uh, just of it with the landed version. Now up here for the in-flight version, obviously uh, pretty straightforward. You got the cockpit up here, uh, which is kind of elevated above the cargo hold. Uh, theoretically, these doors would be able to swing open. I do not have a design for that, so I, will be not sh I won't be showing that in the tutorial. However, you can kind of look at pictures and maybe make your own opened up doors or something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, still cool nonetheless. We got external fuel tanks on the sides here. Uh, giving it that, that extra range again here's a different look at the engine pods and stuff lots of good detail going on with them and um, they came out pretty good uh, the main rotor itself has uh, five large blades and is uh, you know pretty uh, beefy for sure to say the very least pretty big uh, blades and uh, rotors there we have the door here for troops to uh, offload and load onto the helicopter Obviously, the unit number being 81, you can do different numbers and stuff, and I'll be linking a tutorial uh, down in the description for doing the different numbered banners and letter banners. As you can see here, we have the Army, uh, basically the Army version, I guess, of this helicopter belongs to the Army, with the Army writing on the back here. Of course, you can change it to Marine Corps, whatever you want to do there. Um, and then we have the tail uh, rotor back here, just a pretty straightforward, simple design all the way around. Uh, but overall, I really like this helicopter. I think it's a really awesome helicopter. It's been a while since we've kind of done a uh, Vietnam era, I guess, early kind of Cold War type helicopter design. And uh, this is definitely one of those cool helicopters that could, uh, you know, 
take apart in your world or, you know, you can just build it for the heck of it. Anyways, a uh, pretty cool helicopter. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving on to our first layer, we'll be going ahead and starting with layer number two. The reason we're starting with layer number two is because layer one is very simple uh, little things like the back little wheel here and this little uh, fence post that sticks down. So it's a lot easier just to build this, uh, you know, layer two because you start to see a little bit more of the structure and it helps you kind of plan out your build and its positioning a little bit better. Now, if you are interested in building the landed version of the aircraft, we will be going ahead and covering that, that, covering that at the end of the tutorial. So we will be modifying the in-flight version to be the landed version. Now, uh, to make sure that you have your aircraft positioned properly, you're going to want to make sure that you have this layer, layer number two, exactly one block off the ground. You can see this magenta wool, wool block here representing that block space that you're going to need, and the row of black wool representing the ground level. Uh, it does sit very close and it will look, you know, a little odd at first that it's so close, but with the landing gear and all that stuff and the way this uh, aircraft is actually structured, it is supposed to sit like that. Um, so that is how it's supposed to be. Um, also with this aircraft, we are going to be building half on, half off. If you are new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these, I like to do half on, camera half off. With this build being mostly uh, symmetrical, we're going to be going ahead and just doing one uh, half of the layer on camera and leaving the air half for you guys to copy over in between layers. It's pretty simple and you'll get the hang of it um, as we uh, basically progress through the build. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into layer two and get started with this layer. Um, hopefully you have everything fi uh, figured out and uh, have this position uh, that you're gonna put this in. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place down a uh, row here. So we're gonna go ahead and create our very center line of the aircraft. So it's gonna be the very middle uh, of the aircraft going down. What we're going to do is we're going to start off placing down a dark oak with top slab, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 green stain clay blocks going backwards. We then want to switch to dark oak with top slabs again, place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 dark oak with top slabs going back like that. So again, counting our green stain clay blocks, we have a row of 14, and then we have a row of 7 uh, dark oak with top slabs. Once we have that all squared away for our center line, we can go ahead and continue back and set up the kind of back here, which our landing, our rear wheel is going to connect up to a little bit later. So going ahead and going from this dark oak with top slab toward the back, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine uh, placeholder blocks. So we're going to delete these blocks in a second. Uh, basically nine blocks back, we're then going to place down a dark oak with fence post, place down another one of these placeholder blocks, and then place down a cobblestone wall. So basically what should happen if we delete this block right here, we have a space of one between this cobblestone wall and this dark oak with fence post. We go ahead and we break these uh, nine magenta wool blocks back. We have a space of nine now of magenta wool, or nine is a space of air in between this dark oak with fence post and this uh, dark oak with top slab. And uh, just to double check, yep, we have nine blocks of space in between the two. Anyways, uh, once that's done, we have our center line complete and we can go ahead and start copying over to the right side. And again, whatever we copy over to the right side of this very center line here is what we're gonna copy over to the left side in between layers. To start off with, we're gonna go to the front here, place down a dark oak with top slab coming off both sides of this first top slab here. We then wanna go ahead and take our green stained clay. We're gonna place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 green stain clay blocks back. So it's going to be directly uh, the same amount as the center line. We're then going to switch back to dark oak with top slabs, place down 1, 2, and 3 dark oak with top slabs back. Once that's all complete, we want to go ahead and then take our uh, dark oak with top slabs. We're going to go ahead and go to the second green stain clay block back on this row of 14 on the side here. After this uh, dark oak with top slab, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, more dark oak with top slabs going back to go ahead and create a row of what is going to be 13 dark oak with top slabs along the side here. With that done, we want to go ahead and go to the, um, we'll, let's see, we can count back. We'll go to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and your 6th uh, dark oak with top slab from the front. We're going to place down a dark oak with top seven to the side, followed by one, two, and three more back. So again, uh, this is going to be the fifth uh, dark oak with top seven back. We're going to place down a dark oak with top seven out to the side, followed by three more back, giving you a row of four here along the sides. So you should have four uh, dark oak with top steps coming out on this end, and you should have five coming off this way toward the front. 
With that done, we're going to take our green snake wood blocks, place down one, two, three, and four. Green snake wood blocks come off these four dark oak wood top slabs. Coming off of uh, both directions of this row of four of uh, green snake clay, we're going to go ahead and place down uh, a row of two of dark oak wood top slabs. We then want to go ahead and go toward the inside here, come off this first dark oak wood top slab. We're going to place down a zombie head like this, uh, coming off the side of it. Once that's done, come out to the side here. We're going to take our dark oak wood top slabs, place down one, two, three, and four. Dark oak wood top slabs come off those four green stained clay blocks, followed by a zombie head coming off these two dark oak wood top slabs. Once that's done, we're going to take our wooden trap doors and place down one and two wooden trap doors going back from this dark oak wood top slab. And once that's complete, you're going to go ahead and copy the same design over here to the other side. So looking at it from above, you should get something that looks just like this uh, with the layer all complete. Uh, once you have that all complete, that's going to do it for layer uh, number one and, or sorry, my bad, layer number two. And with that, we're going to drop down to layer one, get that layer squared away, and then move back up to layer three. So with that, let's move on to layer one. All right, guys, so layer one is going to be the, by far the easiest layer uh, for this tutorial. It's uh, really simple uh, to do, and we're going to go ahead and uh, basically dive into it. So to start off with, we're going to take a dark oak with fence post. We're going to go ahead and go to the bottom of the, the fuselage here and place down a dark oak with fence post coming down for this last green stink green block here in the middle just like this uh, going back. We then want to go back to this cobblestone wall here. We're going to go ahead and go uh, down and back at an angle like this from the cobblestone wall like that. Coming off the side of this block of coal, we're going to go ahead and place down a lever like this, followed by stone buns on both sides of the block of coal like that to make the rear uh, landing su or supporting wheel there. Uh, once you have that complete, that is going to complete layer uh, four, or sorry about layer one. I don't know what I was getting four from. And also, if you are building this thing landed, this block of coal should be on the ground level. Um, so it should be resting on the ground. Um, just to throw that in there as well to make sure everything is going good for those of you want that want to build this thing landed a little bit later. Anyways, that's it for layer one. Let's move on to layer three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer. We have layer number three. For layer three, we're going to start off by taking our a green stink wood block and place it down, come off this uh, dark oak with top slab, kind of going up forward at an angle like that, as you can see from the side there. We then want to place down a stone button coming off this uh, green stain clay block and also on the bottom of it we're going to place down a stone button as well. This was something that was uh, supposed to go in the previous layer that obviously we can't really do because we didn't have the block above here so we're going to place that stone button down now. To both sides of this green stain clay block we're going to place down a narrow block of green stain clay out to the side so you have a row of three that's eventually going to go across the front here. Uh, going back from this green stain clay block on the side we're going to place down two green stain clay blocks back. Coming off these two green stain clay blocks here we're going to place down two mossy cobblestone walls. Going back to these mossy cobblestone walls, we're going to place down one and two green stink wood blocks back. Uh, coming off this uh, second green stink wood block, we're going to place down a uh, dark oak wood top slab. We're then going to follow this up by placing down a row of one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, and eight uh, dark oak wood stairs back. So we can go and just count this again. We have eight dark oak wood upstairs stairs going back. Uh, once that's done there, uh, I just want to double check to make sure we do the next part right. And we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood ups and down corner stair, come off this uh, eighth stair here, followed by a dark oak wood top slab. We then want to go ahead and go to the inside here, place down two green stained clay blocks next to this corner stair and this top slab, followed by one additional green stained clay block going back, ending on top of this dark oak wood top slab. After that green stained clay block there, we're going to, go to take our dark oak wood stairs, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair like, upside down like this followed by a stair that comes off the stair at a uh, different angle. So we have a corner stair, regular upside down stair, followed by a second upside down stair going back. Uh, once that's done there, we're going to go ahead and switch to top slabs and place down one and two dark oak with top slabs. Now in between these two dark oak with top slabs, we're going to place down a row of three across. That's going to go across the middle here uh, like that. Once that's done, we're going to place down, coming off the center green stain clay block, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine green stain clay blocks back. So it should overhang by seven blocks past this row of uh, dark oak with top slabs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven blocks, as you can see, overhanging it. We then want to go ahead and go to the back section here to place down a dark oak with top slab, followed by a second top slab after that. Uh, we're then going to place down an upside down dark oak wood stair that should connect up to this dark oak wood fence post like so. We're then going to place down a dark oak wood top slab here, followed by a dark oak wood upside down stair connected up to the cobblestone wall, and then two dark oak wood top slabs come off the front here of that dark oak wood upside down stair. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and go to this first green stain clay block here. We're going to place down a yellow hardened stain clay block to the side, followed by one, two, and three green stain clay blocks going forward. 
Once that's done, we're going to place down a dark liquid upside down stair, facing that direction like so. Followed by one, two, and uh, yeah, with just two uh, dark liquid upside down stairs. We have a corner stair, two regular dark liquid upside down stairs, and then we're going to follow it up by placing down one and two dark liquid top sides back. Once we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and go to the fuel pod here on the side and continue work on this. Uh, to start off with, we're going to place down a dark liquid slab on top of this one up here in the front, followed by a dark liquid stair that goes back. Go back from the dark oak stair, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, green stain clay blocks back, followed by a dark oak stair, and 1 and 2 dark oak slabs back from the dark oak stair. Um, out to the side here, we're going to place down two dark oak slabs on the center, two dark oak top slabs, and then a dark oak slab on both sides of these two uh, dark oak stairs. Uh, once that's all uh, finished there, we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some zombie heads, place down zombie heads on the sides here of these dark oakwood, uh, or on the side here of this dark oakwood stair, and the side here of this green stained clay block. Uh, once that's all complete there, that is going to uh, pretty much wrap up uh, layer uh, 3, and with that, we can go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer 4. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 4. For layer 4, we're going to go to this middle green stain clay block and place up a green stain clay block going up and kind of at an angle from it like so, like that. Coming off the front of this block, we're going to place down a stone bun like so. On both sides of this light gray stained glass block, we're going to place down, or side of this green stain clay uh, block, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass paint at the sides, followed by one and two light gray stained glass full blocks back. On the sides of these light gray stained glass full blocks, we're going to place down two light gray stained glass panes. After those light green stained glass panes, we're going to place down one and two green stained clay blocks back, followed by a mossy cobblestone wall coming off the second green stained clay block to the side. We're then going to place down a yellow hardened stained clay block out to the side, and we then want to grab ourselves a birchwood fence gate and place down a birchwood fence gate uh, coming off this yellow stained uh, clay block out to the side there like that. After that's done, we're going to take our green stained clay blocks going back from the yellow stained clay block. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, 9 and 10 green stain clay blocks back. Let's go ahead and just get a double count here. And uh, it is 10 green stain clay blocks back. We're then going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall at the end of this row. Go to the inside, place down a green stain clay block. We're then going to switch to spruce wood planks, place down 1, 2, and 3 spruce wood planks back with stone buns along these three uh, spruce wood planks, like so. We then want to place down another green stain clay block back, followed by 1, 2, and 3 mossy cobblestone walls. We're going to go ahead and go to the inside here. Place down a row of three of green stained clay blocks next to those mossy cobblestone walls. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go after these green stained clay blocks. We're going to place down an additional one, two, three, and four back. So you have a row of seven here, green stained clay. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go from these uh, green state this row of seven of green stained clay. We're going to take our mossy cobblestone walls, place down one, two, three, four, five, and six mossy cobblestone walls back like this. In between these six mossy cobblestone walls in the middle row here, we're going to place down a row of six of green stained clay. Then uh, sticking back, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four green stained clay blocks, giving you a row of ten here. Down the middle, and this last green stained clay block should end on top of this dark oak with top slab. On the very end of this row of ten of green stained clay, down the middle, we're going to place down a dark oak with upside down stair here. On the very back, like so. Uh, once uh, that's done, I... I think the last thing we need to do is just go ahead and create the little uh, connection piece here for the uh, drop tanks here on the side or the fuel tanks. Uh, for this, we're going to place down a dark oak wood up sound stair coming off of our fifth green stained clay block from the yellow stained clay block. So we can go ahead and count back one, two, three, uh, four, and our fifth green stained clay block back. We're going to place down an upside down stair coming off of it. Uh, right next to it, we're going to place down an end rod like this going back and then a another dark oak wood up sound stair. On both sides of these stairs, we're going to place down a green stain clay block and then coming off the front of the stairs themselves we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a wooden sign and place down a wooden sign coming off the front of those stairs like so and anyways that's what it looks like for layer uh layers basically one through four so far from the side and here's what it looks like from up above so far and uh yeah so just going to take that copied over the other side and with that complete that's going to do it for layer number four with that we can move on to layer number five Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 5. For layer 5, we're going to start off with placing down a green stained clay block on top of this one up here in the front. With a stone button come off the green stained clay block just like the previous uh, layer before. Stone button going off of it toward the front. On both sides of this green stained clay block, we're going to place down a dark oak stair. Going back from the dark oak stair, we're going to place down a green stained clay block, followed by a mossy cobblestone wall out to the side of the block. Going back from the mossy cobblestone wall, we're going to place down one, two, and three green stained clay blocks back. Coming off these two green stained clay blocks, we're going to place down two mossy cobblestone walls. 
After those two bossy cobbles and walls, we're gonna place down a green stained clay block, followed by a light gray stained glass block, a green stained clay block, or actually sorry, two green stained clay blocks, a light gray stained glass block, followed by one, two, three, four, and five green stained clay blocks back, a light gray stained glass block. Uh, we're after this light gray stained glass block, we're gonna go ahead and then place down two mossy cobblestone walls. On the inside here, we're gonna place down a green stained clay block coming off the first mossy cobblestone wall. Coming off the second mossy cobblestone wall, however, we're gonna place down a spruce wood plank. After the spruce wood plank, we're gonna place down a light gray stained glass block, followed by another spruce wood plank. Uh, after we have that done, we're then gonna place down a green stained clay block. This right here is where you can go ahead and choose to put your unit number of the helicopter. So you can see, I went ahead and just put 81. Uh, you can go ahead and do your own number. Uh, you can make it even like a, you know, triple digit number or the, when the hundreds, 112, whatever you want to do. Uh, but for me, I'm just doing 81. And uh, I, of course, I again left a tutorial down in the description for you guys to make your own numbers and stuff like that. And you guys can go and refer back to that. You can refer to that video to figure out how to put the banners on. But basically, your banners are going to go in these two positions right here, uh, just like that. Uh, once that's done, we're going to place down another green stained clay block back. And if you were doing a triple digit, you can place down the third banner right here on the green stained clay block if you want to. Anyways, uh, with that out of the way, we can go and then take our mossy cobblestone walls, place down one, two, and three back from this green stained clay block. On the inside here, next to these green stained clay blocks, we're going to place down one, two, and three green stained clay blocks on the inside of these mossy cobblestone walls. Uh, going back from these uh, green stained clay blocks, we're going to place down an additional one, two, three, and four green stained clay blocks back, giving you a row of seven. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go from the row of seven of green stained clay. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, and five green or mossy cobblestone walls. In the middle uh, section here, we're going to place down a row of five of green stained clay blocks, which are going to be in between these mossy cobblestone walls going down the center. Going back from this row of five of green stained clay, we're going to place down two mossy cobblestone walls. Followed by one, two, and three green stained clay blocks ending on top of this dark oak wood upstairs. stair. Coming off those green stained clay blocks, we're going to place down a dark oak wood top slab, followed by a wooden trap door, like that. Also, this section here is where you can choose to go ahead and put your uh, branch of the military it's serving under. So you can see here, I went ahead and just put army. Army coming kind of fits the best in this section. Um, however, you could do Marine Corps and all that stuff, um, though it might be a little bit more of a, uh, might expand a little bit more of the fuselage than you really want. Uh, but anyways, uh, to do the army logo, again, there's a link to the tutorial on how to do the lettered banners. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and then once you make your letters, you can just go ahead and uh, put the letters in order. Spell an army on the side here. And you can see how they look here on both sides. So overall, pretty straightforward there. Nothing real uh, fancy going on in terms of that. Um, also, one thing we want to go ahead and add on to this layer is placing down a stone button on this green stain clay block. And also a stone button right here on this green stain clay block as well. So uh, once that's all done, also one last thing for getting these little details here, uh, we want to place down redstone repeaters on these two dark oak wood ups and down stairs with the redstone repeaters facing that direction like that. Anyways, with that all complete, that's going to do for this layer. You can go and feel free to go crazy with the banners, do whatever you guys want, whatever you think fits best. Anyways, that's going to do it for this layer. Let's move on to layer six. Alrighty guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer uh, number six. For layer six, we're going to start off with placing down a mossy cobblestone wall on this wall right here on both sides. Um, we're then going to place down a row of three green stained clay across the, in the middle in between them with a stone button coming off the center, green stained clay block going toward the front. After that's done, we then want to go ahead and go back from this mossy cobblestone wall with a yellow hardened stained clay block, followed by one, two green stained clay blocks. We're then going to follow it up, follow it up by placing down another uh, yellow stained clay block. And after that, we're going to take our green stained clay blocks and place down a long row back from this green from the yellow stained clay block. So we're going to place down one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven green stained clay blocks back like that from the yellow stained clay block. We then want to take our spruce wood planks. We're gonna place down one, two, and three spruce wood planks along the side here, followed by three stone buttons come off those spruce wood planks. Uh, once that's done, we want to go ahead and then go back up to the uh, front section up here. We're gonna go ahead and go to this first green stained clay block right after the first yellow stained clay block, and we're gonna place down a long row of mossy cobblestone walls. Uh, going back here like this, all the way back here until we get to this last green stained clay block right here. So in total, you're going to have a row of what is going to be uh, 14 mossy cobblestone walls along the side here. Uh, after that's all complete there, we want to go ahead and also grab ourselves a uh, birchwood fence gate. And coming off this third mossy cobblestone wall here, we're going to be placing down a birchwood fence gate. Coming off of it like so, opened up toward the mossy cobblestone wall. 
After that's all done, we're going to go, ahead and go back to this section here. We're going to place down a green snake plate block back after the spruce wood planks here. We're then going to follow that up by placing down a row of one, two, and three mossy cobblestone walls back. We then want to place down a dark oak wood upside down stair, and on the back of the dark oak wood upside down stair, we're going to place down a uh, sign and make sure the stair is facing this direction like so. Once that's done, we're going to go in between the mossy cobblestone walls, and it's going to be a row of three of green snake clay across the middle here, followed by a second row of three, a third row, and a fourth row in between the dark oak wood stairs. Coming back to this section here, it's going to be a row of three that's going to go across the fuselage here, uh, followed by a row of three of green snake clay coming off this center green snake clay block. On both sides of this first green snake wood block, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall, followed by a dark oak wood stair back, and then a dark oak wood corner stair. After the dark oak wood corner stair, we're going to place down a zombie head, followed by another zombie head here at a uh, kind of slight, which is going to be about a 30 degree angle. If I can get the angle on it, there we go, just like that. And after this green snake wood block, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 mossy cobblestone walls back, followed by two green snake wood blocks a dark oak wood upside down stair, and then a green carpet on top of this wooden trap door. And that's going to do it there for the fuselage. Uh, we then have our start here of the engines. They're going to be on the sides here, so we do need to go ahead and get started with those. So for this, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and counting to our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6th mossy cobblestone wall back. So again, or sorry, my bad, it's going to be the 7th one back. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 mossy cobblestone walls on the side here. We're going to go ahead and go to the 7th mossy cobblestone wall and place down a place or a block that you can delete later uh, right here coming off this mossy cobblestone wall. Now uh, between the fuselage itself and the start of this uh, piston engine here on the side, we're going to go ahead and have ourselves a space of two of, that's going to be open air, but we're going to use those place or blocks to get us started. Now after we have that done, coming off this, this uh, row here, these blocks, we're going to place down a upside down uh, spruce wood stair looks something like this after that's done after that spruce wood stair there we're going to place down a row of three that go back so one two and three make sure you're going toward the back of the fuselage and not toward the front so you want something that looks like this so far on the back here of these uh, spruce wood stairs we're going to place down one two three and four green stinkway blocks followed by another row of four green stinkway blocks after that uh, with that all done we're going to go ahead and go out to the side here we're going to place down a dark oak wood upside down stair followed by two uh, green snake clay blocks. And after those two green, or on the side of these two green snake clay blocks, we're gonna go ahead and place down uh, two ladders like this. After that's done, we're gonna place down another dark oak wood upside down stair, right here in this section like that. When we come back to this section here, uh, we're gonna place down two green snake clay blocks going back down the middle, followed by a dark oak wood top slab that is going to come off this dark oak wood stair on both sides here. Going ahead and continue now, we're gonna place down a row of two of dark oak wood top slabs across the back here and a wooden trap door coming off the dark oak wood slab here closest to the fuselage. So again looking at it from above it's going to look something kind of like that. Once that's done uh, going ahead and working our way toward the front here very simply we're going to place down two dark oak wood upside down stairs come off those two green snake clay blocks followed by two dark oak wood top slabs come off those two dark oak wood upside down stairs. After that's done we can go and then delete these placeholder blocks and once we have that all complete, uh, that will pretty much do with this layer. Again, here's a bit of an overview of what this uh, layer looks like complete. And here's a look at the side of what this uh, layer looks complete as well for the fuselage. Anyways, that's going to do it for layer number uh, 6. And with that, we can go ahead and move on to layer 7. Alright guys, so going ahead and move on to our next layer. We have layer number 7. For layer 7, we're going to start off by going to the front up here, obviously, and going on top of this green stained clay block. We're going to place down a yellow stained clay block on top of it with a stone button coming off that block toward the front. On both sides of this yellow stained clay block, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall, and going back from the mossy cobblestone wall, we're going to place down a green hardened stained clay block. Coming off this green hardened stained clay block to the side, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair. And after that, we're going to go to this uh, mossy cobblestone wall here and place down a zombie head at a slight angle. Now up here in the front, if you are going ahead and uh, whatever number you chose to do, make sure you go ahead and place your number here. As you can see, if a two-digit number, I have it spaced out. If you have a three-digit number, you're just going to place it straight across here like that, and you will not put the stone button here on this yellow stained clay block. Uh, but whatever number you chose to do, you're going to go ahead and put it across the front there, uh, either like this or with a you know uh, space row three all the way across there, whatever you, number you chose to do on the sides. Um, anyways, once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and then go from this uh, 
Dark Oak would stare to place down one, two, and three. Light Gray Sting, like Light Gray Sting West blocks back, followed by two Light Gray Sting West Pains coming off these two Light Gray Sting West Full Blocks. After that's done, come off those two Light Gray Sting West Full Blocks. We're gonna take Green Sting Queen Blocks, place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen Green Sting Queen Blocks back. On the sides here, going back from these Light Gray Sting West Pains, we're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight mossy cobblestone walls back. We then want to go and go to this row of green stink clay again. We're going to place down a dark oak wood stair. In between the dark oak wood stairs, we're just going to be a row of three of green stink clay across the middle here. We're then going to place down a second row of three of green stink clay across, followed by a wither, or sorry, a zombie head on top of this mossy cobblestone wall. We're then going to place down a green stink clay block here in the middle, dark oak wood slab on both sides, with a zombie head here at a slight three degree angle. Again, same thing there on both sides. We're then going to place down a narrow green snake quick block going back down the middle. Dark oak would slab on both sides. A narrow green snake quick go going down the middle. And a dark oak would slab again on both sides. Followed by a green carpet on top of these upside down dark oak wood stairs. After this green snake quick block, we're going to take our mossy cobblestone walls and place down a long row of 13 mossy cobblestone walls going back like this. It's going to end right on top of this first green stain clay block, but after this row of 13 of mossy cobblestone walls, we're going to place down two yellow stain clay blocks, followed by a dark oak with top slab on the end here. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves black banners and go to the second and third to last mossy cobblestone walls and place down two black banners coming off those mossy cobblestone walls. With uh, that all complete, uh, that is uh, going to do it for the main fuselage there for the most part, I believe. Actually, we have one last thing to add. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our zombie heads again, go to this cobblestone wall here, mossy cobblestone wall, place down a zombie head on top of it, and a slight kind of tilted zombie head on this uh, second to last mossy cobblestone wall in that row there, and uh, that's going to be uh, there on both sides, and that's going to do it for the fuselage. Now going ahead and moving into the piston engines on the sides. For these engines to get started, we're going to go to the uh, last two mossy cobblestone walls in this row of what is... Um, Eight mossy cobblestone walls we placed earlier. We're gonna place down two wooden trap doors that come off those mossy cobblestone walls, followed by an additional two more like that that come off of them. So you have basically a two by two kind of uh, square here coming off of it like that. We then want to go ahead and go back from these uh, wooden trap doors, one uh, and two more. Same thing right here, one and two more back like that. Once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves green stain clay, place down a row of four green stain clay coming off those four wooden trap doors there, and then we're gonna place down an additional one, two, and three green stain clay blocks going forward. Come off those green stain clay blocks, we're gonna place down one and two mossy cobblestone walls. Uh, going toward the back here, uh, we're gonna place down a dark oak wood uh, upside down stair after this green stain clay block, followed by a dark oak wood top slab. For our next row over, we're gonna go ahead and start off by going to the mossy cobblestone wall here. We're gonna place down a green stain clay block over. We then wanna go ahead and place down a uh, Nether brick uh, stair coming off of it like so. And then right next to the nether brick stair, we're going to place down a white skeleton skull. Going back from this green stink clay block, we're going to go and grab ourselves some black wool. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Black wool blocks back, followed by one, two, and three. Green stink clay blocks back, and then a dark oak with top slab. After that's done, we're going to go, and go to our next row out to the side. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves quartz. We're going to place down a quartz full block next to this narrow brick stair, followed by a green stain clay block from the back from the quartz stair, or the quartz full block. We're then going to go ahead and place down a black wool block back. We then want to grab ourselves an anvil. We're going to place down an anvil, followed by one, two, three, and four black wool blocks back, and followed by one and two green stain clay blocks back after that. Uh, once uh, that's all finished, we're going to go back up to the front here, place down two Mossy cobblestone walls, one come off this green stain clay block, one come off this black wool block, and then a skeleton skull come off the side of this quartz block. After those uh, mossy cobblestone walls, we're going to go ahead and place down a end rod like this, followed by a nether brick upside down stair. We then want to go ahead and follow that up by placing down a uh, anvil, so another anvil right here, uh, where they're going to place down two green stain clay blocks back, and then a mossy cobblestone wall back here like so. And with uh, that uh, done there, we can go ahead and uh, do our lap final last thing out to the side here for the engine. This is grabbing a zombie head, placing down a zombie head coming off this uh, narrow brick upside down stair, and rod to the side, and there's a zombie head right here come off this green stain clear block. Anyways, uh, once that's all done there, that's going to pretty much 
uh, wrap up our piston engines on the side there for either side. So go ahead and copy that design obviously over to the air side. Here's what they look like from up above. And here's a look from up above for the fuselage as a whole. And of course, we're going to look at the side here of it so far. As you can see, it's really starting to take shape and uh, starting to look pretty good. Anyways, that's going to do it for layer number seven. Let's move on to layer number eight. Alrighty guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer uh, number eight. So for layer eight, we're gonna start off by placing down a light gray stained glass block on top of this kind of empty space right here above this. Uh, so it's gonna be right here in this section here, followed by another light gray stained glass block on both sides and a wooden sign come off this block toward the front. Uh, once that's done on both sides here on this dark oak wood up down stair, we're gonna place down a zombie head here at about a 45 degree angle. So it's gonna be a little bit of a sharper angle than this skeleton skull down there. We then want to go ahead and go to the light gray stained glass block on the side here. We're going to place down one more block back, followed by a dark oak wood uh, stair like this out to the side. After this dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down a row of one and two green stained glass, or sorry, uh, just uh, gray uh, stained glass blocks back, light gray stained glass blocks back, followed by two wooden signs along the sides there. We then want to go ahead and take some, or dark oak wood stair, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair like this. And coming off this stair, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five dark oak wood uh, stairs like that. So you have the corner stair and then five regular stairs going back. We're then going to take green stained clay blocks, place down one, two, and three green stained clay blocks back, followed by a dark oak wood stair. After the dark oak wood stair, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves dark oak wood slabs, place down one, two, three dark oak wood slabs back. On the inside here, come off the back of the stair, and these two dark oak wood slabs, we're going to place down two green stained clay blocks. Uh, after that's done, coming off this uh, green stained clay block, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair back, followed by a second stair, and then a dark oak wood slab. In the middle here, in between these two dark oak wood stairs, we're going to place down two green stained clay blocks, followed by one and two more that go back, so it sticks out one past these dark oak wood slabs on both sides. I just want to double check there isn't anything on the back here that I am uh, missing. I do believe there's actually supposed to be this on the back here. Uh, I think that that was lost in copying and pasting. The building, yes it was, so uh, go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and throw that on here. So uh, we're then going to place down an item frame, come off this green stained clay block with a black wool block in the item frame and a wooden sign on both sides of this green stained clay block. Um, anyways, once that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and skip back here to the tail. For the tail section back here on top of this yellow stained clay block, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair, followed by two green stained clay blocks back from it, and then a dark oak wood top side right down the end there. So our tail should look something like that so far. Anyways, once that's done, we can go ahead and now direct our attention to working on the piston engines. So let's go ahead and get started on these. So to start off with, coming off this green stain clay block here, we're going to place down one and two green stain clay blocks out to the side. With that done, we're going to place down an anvil on top of this uh, wooden trap door like that. After that's done, coming off this second green stain clay block, we're going to place down one, two, and three green stain clay blocks out to the side. We're then going to go ahead and go to our third green stink block here, place down one, two, and three more out to the side. So you have basically two rows of four, a row of three, and an anvil, something like this, like, so, like something like that so far, and on top of these wooden trap doors. Once that's done, come off this dark oak wood stair and place down one, two, and three dark oak wood slabs out to the side there, like so. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and take our green stink blocks, we're going to place down a green stink block, come off this dark oak wood slab, followed by one more uh, green stink block back, and then a narrow brick stair on the end here. Uh, going toward the front here, we're going to take our green stained clay blocks. Come off this one, we're going to go ahead and go one, two, three, four, five, and six green stained clay blocks going toward the front, followed by two mossy cobblestone walls like that. We then want to grab ourselves a lever and place down a lever. Come off this green stained clay block right next to this anvil, like so on the inside here of the engine. Uh, with that done, for our next row, we're going to start on the back here, place down a narrow brick stair next to this one. Going from the back of the stair, we're going to place down one, two, and three green stained clay blocks going forward. Followed by one, two, three, four, five, and six black wool blocks, a green stained clay block, and coming off the green stained clay block, we're gonna place down an upside down narrow brick stair with a zombie or a skeleton skull come off the inside here of the um, of the narrow brick upside down stair, the inside here toward the fuselage. Uh, with that done, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a uh, quartz full block here on top of this one right here, and again like we. Uh, did before on the previous day we're going to place down a skeleton skull out to the side. Now going back from this quartz block here we're going to place down a uh, green stained clay block. We then want to switch to a black wool block followed by an anvil and like we did in the previous row we're going to place down one, two, three, and four more uh, black wool blocks back. After those black wool blocks we're going to place down one and two green stained clay blocks back 
followed by a stone brick slab here on the end. Now coming off this stone brick slab, we're going to need to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame again if we lost it. We're going to place down an item frame coming off this slab toward the back. A, uh, a uh, black wool block in the item frame and a sign coming off the side of the stone brick slab. We're then going to go ahead and go to this green stink wood block here, place down a stone brick slab out to the side, a wooden sign next to it, uh, item frame, black wool block in the item frame. Um, after that stone brick slab, we're going to go ahead and place down a mossy cobblestone wall. So a mossy cobblestone wall like this with a sign coming off the side of it as well. We then want to place down a green stinkway block. And I believe this green stinkway block also has a sign next to it. And yes, it does. So a sign right here next to this green stinkway block. Where they're going to place down a uh, anvil. So it's going to be an anvil. Uh, the, after the anvil, we're going to place down a dark oak wood. Or sorry, another brick stair like this. On top of this anvil, coming off the uh, dark oak wood, or sorry, the nether brick upside down stair, we're to place down a wither skeleton skull, like so. And after coming off the winter's wither skeleton skull, we're to place down an end rod. And after that end rod there, we're to place down two mossy cobblestone walls that connect us up to the front. So one and two mossy cobblestone walls like that. Uh, with that all finished, uh, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a zombie head, and we will need to actually go ahead and go back to this wither skeleton skull. We're actually going to break that skull real quick. Place down a block in that space, place down a zombie head coming off that block, break the block, and then put the wither skeleton skull back. Once that's done there, coming off the zombie head toward the back, we're going to place down an end rod, followed by a zombie head like this, come off this anvil like that. And once you have that done, that will kind of complete your engines here. You can take a look at it from above. You're going to have the same thing going on there on both sides. And uh, here's a look at the fuselage again from above here all the way, and a side view as well for it so far. Anyways, once you guys have that all complete, that is going to do it for layer number 8. Let's move on to layer number 9. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 9. For layer 9, we're going to go ahead and start off by going up to the front here. And we're going to go ahead and place down a row of 3 of like gray stained glass panes on these 3 like gray stained glass full blocks from the previous layer. We then want to go ahead and go to the sides here, going back from these glass panes on the sides, we're going to place down a like gray stained glass full block. And then we're going to place down a second like gray stained glass full block after that. Coming off those like gray stained glass full blocks, we're going to place down 2 like gray stained glass panes to the side. And in between these two light gray stained glass full blocks from both sides here in the middle, we're going to place down two dark oak with top slabs. Uh, after those dark oak with top slabs, we're going to place down one more dark oak with top slab back, followed by a dark oak with stair, two dark oak with top slabs back, and then two wooden trap doors. Now, from the previous layer, I did miss that we do want to go ahead and when we get to this section here, we do want to place down uh, basically two rows of three here of green stained clay. They're going to go over uh, this space like so. So you do want to make sure that that is closed off right there. Um, or else you're going to have a gaping hole in the top here, which you really don't want to have. Anyways, after those two wooden trap doors, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green stained clay blocks back, followed by a dark oak wood stair, dark oak wood slab, and wooden trap door. Uh, with that done, we're going to go ahead and then go and start focusing on the sides here. So on both sides of this third dark oak, dark oak wood uh, top slab here, we're going to place down a uh, dark or another brick stair out to the side. Uh, we then want to go ahead and take our dark oak wood stairs, place down a dark oak wood corner stair, come off the narrow brick stair, fall by a row of one and two dark oak wood slabs back. We're then going to place down a wooden trap door, and then we want to grab ourselves a green carpet and place down a green carpet on this green stink wood block here. After that green carpet, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five green stink wood blocks back, a dark oak wood stair, and then a dark oak wood slab after that. Coming off this dark oak wood stair here, we're going to place down a uh, zombie head like this. We then want to go ahead and go after the zombie head on the next stair. Place down a zombie head at a slight kind of 30 degree angle like that to kind of create a smooth kind of transition or flow and shape there. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go back up to the cockpit up here, the uh, canopy. We're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull right here after this glass pane right here kind of in front of this narrow brick stair. After that wither skeleton skull, we're going to place down a green... Uh, for the zombie head, followed by a zombie head at a slight angle like that on both sides there. Should be the same thing, like so. Once that's done, on the sides here, we're going to go to the wings. We're going to place down one, two, and three. Dark liquid stairs along the side here. We're going to take mossy cobblestone walls and place down one and two. Or my bad. It's going to be two dark liquid stairs along the side here and then two mossy cobblestone walls back like that. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and save the wings for a second here. We're going to go ahead and skip back to the tail here and get the tail built up real quick. So on top of this green stink wood block here, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair, followed by two green stink wood blocks back, and a dark oak wood top slab. Pretty straightforward. Also, um, from a few layers ago, on this yellow stink wood block 
on the second one right here, we want to place down a stone button on both sides. So I did forget that, so just go ahead and throw that on real quick. Uh, but yeah, your tail should look something like this now. With that all done, we can go ahead and focus back up here and start working our, on our engines out to the sides here. So for this, we're going to start off by taking dark oak with slabs. We're going to place down one and two slabs on these two green snake blue blocks come off the first stair here, and we're going to go ahead and stop it there. We then want to switch to wooden trap doors, place down one, two, and three. Wooden trap doors come off the second dark oak wood stair, and then that's what we're going to do there for that coverage over the wing section like that. Once that's done, we're going to grab ourselves a nether brick slab. We're going to place down a nether brick slab on top of this uh, lever like that. Uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the back here, start on the back and work our way out or forward and then out to the side. So we're going to place down a wooden trap door on this green stakeway block, followed by a row of two of dark oak with slabs going forward, so one and two. We then want to place down two green stakeway blocks, followed by a anvil right here. We're then going to place down a narrow two green stakeway blocks going forward. After, or sorry, I have a not uh, green stakeway blocks, we're actually going to place down a dark oak with. Uh, stair like this and a dark oak stair right behind it. So we turn this stair into a corner stair then we have a regular stair like that um, And that's going to do it for that section there for our next row over We're going to go ahead and go to the back here come off this dark oak slab with a narrow slab out to the side We then want to place down a row of one and two of uh, green stained clay blocks along the side here. We're going to place down a um, We uh, are going to go and then place down a narrow green stained clay block. So you have a row of three here actually uh, We then want to switch to black wool we're gonna place down a black wool block, and actually this this uh, third green snake wood block, we're gonna switch out for black wool as well. So we have two green snake wood blocks, two black wool, and then after that, we're gonna place down a, another black wool block right here. We then want to place down a green snake wood block, followed by a dark oak wood stair, and then a dark oak wood slab going forward. For our next row over, uh, we want to go ahead and come off of this dark oak wood slab, place down another dark oak wood slab out to the side like so. We're then gonna go ahead and go to this green snake wood block, place down one out to the side like this, followed by one more that goes back. Uh, we're then going to place down a end rod like this, followed by an anvil. After that anvil, we want to go ahead and place down a black wool block. And after that black wool block, we want to go ahead and place down a green stink wood block going forward. After green stink wood block, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair, followed by a dark oak wood slab like that toward the front. Uh, going to our side here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood slab that's going to go on top of this green stink wood block. Come off that dark oak wood slab. We want to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, and three end rods going forward. After that uh, last end rod there, we're going to place down a dark oak wood stair. Once uh, that's all complete, that's going to do it for uh, this layer, layer nine. Here's a look at what it should look like from above. We're going to take that same engine design as we've been doing, copied over to the air side. Here's a look at it from this, the uh, aircraft from the side here, and uh, you can really start to see the aircraft starting to come together. Anyways, that's going to do it for layer number 9. Let's move on to layer number 10. Alright guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 10. For layer 10 to begin with, we're going to go ahead and take some green carpet, place down your row of 3 of green carpet on these 3 dark oak with top subs, just like that across the top of the canopy here. Once that's done, going back to this section here, we're going to place down a uh, wooden trap door on the top portion like this, followed by a black wool block, 2 green stink wood blocks, and then a dark oak with stair, followed by a wooden trap door down the center. Out to the sides here, we're going to place down an upside down dark oak wood stair on both sides of this wooden trap door, followed by a row of three of black wool. We then want to place, or a black wool block back. We then want to place down a green stink wood block back, followed by a dark oak wood upside down stair. We then want to go and take a uh, zombie skeleton, or a zombie head, and place down a zombie head at a slight 30 degree angle like that on both sides of this dark oak wood stair. Once uh, that's done, we're going to take some mossy cobblestone balls, place down one and two, come off this black wool block and this green stink wood block. We then want to place down a green banner, come off the back of that dark oak wood stair like so. Once that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and skip back to our tail here. We're going to place down a dark oak wood stair on top of this green stink wood block. Two green stink wood blocks back from this dark oak wood stair. And an iron trap door that comes off this green stink wood block out to the side here. Um, just like that, pretty simple and straightforward there. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and focus in on the engines real quick. So for the engines uh, themselves, we're going to go ahead and place down a green carpet on top of this green stink plate block. We then want to place down a wooden trap door over, followed by a wooden tra trap door back, and then one out to the side like so. After that's done, coming off this wooden trap door, we'll place down one and two dark oak wood slabs going forward. Uh, once that's done there, we're going to place down a uh, zombie head on top of this anvil right here. And then come off the zombie head going forward, we're going to place down a uh, end rod like this, like that going toward the front. 
We then want to go ahead and go to these green snake poop box here and place down zombie heads at nice slight angles. So like this on both sides here. So you get something that kind of looks just like that. And um, yeah, looks like that on uh, both sides there. Uh, and once you have that all complete, that's going to do it for layer 10. With that, let's move on to layer 11. Before we go ahead and move on to our next layer, I want to go ahead and uh, real quickly cover one thing that I forgot to include in the uh, previous layer here. So uh, for this layer, one thing I forgot to include was taking some spruce wood slabs and going from this green snake wood block, placing down one, two, three, and four spruce wood slabs out to the side. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to this next green snake wood block here, place down one, two, three, and four uh, dark oak wood slabs out to the side. And then we're going to place down one and two along here. Now this is only going to be on the right side. So just like over here on the left side, we have just the iron trap door. Over here on the right side, we have just uh, these top slabs like that for the tail here. Um, so once that's all finished and completely squared away, then uh, we can go ahead and now move on to our uh, last final set of layers, which is actually going to be layers 11 through 13. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have to finish the tail piece here and also get this section here. So with that, let's move on to our last final layers, layers 11 through 13. Alright guys, so going ahead and move on to our last final layers. We have layers 11 through 13. For these layers, we're going to go ahead and start off by going up to this section here and on top of this black hole block right here, we're going to place down an anvil. Come off the anvil toward the front, we're going to place down a dark oak wood slab, followed by a green carpet on top of those two dark oak wood ups downstairs. We then want to go ahead and place down a dark, two dark oak wood slabs that go back from the anvil toward the rear. Uh, once that's done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak wood slab on both sides of this anvil over those black hole blocks, followed by one more dark oak wood slab back on both sides. Come off those dark oak wood slabs on top of the mossy cobblestone walls, we're going to place down two wooden trap doors. Same thing over here on this side, and then we just want to place down a green carpet on top of these two narrow break ups and downstairs. Uh, after that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and come back to uh, the tail portion here, and we're gonna go ahead and work on this real quick. So for the tail portion, um, we're gonna go ahead and place down a dark oak wood stair on top of this green stink wood block, followed by a black wood block coming off the back of that stair. Now on top of this uh, black wood block, we wanna go ahead and grab ourselves a wither skeleton skull. So there's one right here. Uh, we're going to place down a placeholder block with a wither skeleton skull on top. We're going to delete this block and then place down an end rod like that for the top here. Coming off this black wood block toward the right side, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like so. And then going ahead and working its way over to the left side, we're going to place down a mossy cobblestone wall. Or sorry, just a regular cobblestone wall with a black wood block on the end of it. On both sides of this cobblestone wall, we're going to place down signs. And also on top of the cobblestone wall, we're going to place down a sign as well. And then you have this black wool block here, which we're going to go ahead and connect our rotors to here in a second uh, once we get to that part of the tutorial. But just a stone button on the black wool block right there for the start there of that. Anyways, with that complete, you pretty much have your standard fuselage of the aircraft or the uh, helicopter complete. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and now move on to doing the rotors, as you can see right here, and also uh, the tail here. Before we go ahead and move down into doing the landed version. Now, real quickly, if you are planning on doing the landed version, you're not going to want to do the straight blades like this unless you're having it in the process of starting to take off. Uh, you will want to have them kind of slanted down like that, and I will be showing you guys how to do that. So hold off on the main rotors, but we're going to start off with working on the tail first, and then I'll tell you guys where to skip ahead. Anyways, let's go ahead and move into doing the rotors of the aircraft. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next part of the tutorial, we have the rotors. Now, depending on which version of the aircraft, the landed or the in-flight version, then you're going to want to build a different set of main rotors. However, before we get into that, there is one part of the rotors, which is the tail rotor that is universal for both the in-flight and landed versions. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and go back to the tail here. We have this black wool block. We want to go ahead and place down basically an X of narrow brick stairs going up and uh, at an angle from this black wool block. So you can kind of see what we're doing there going up at an angle there, and we want to have a total of two narrow brick stairs, and then we're going to place down a birch wood stair on the end here. You can see it's basically a staircase going upwards like that. We're going to go ahead and go to the air side and do the same thing. So these uh, narrow brick stairs going up like this, and then we're going to place down a birch wood uh, stair up on top there. Going down to the bottom here, we're going to go ahead and basically repeat the same thing, but we're going to be going down and at an angle. Uh, so just like this. All the way down here and you can see you start to see an X starting to form and over here we're going to go and do the same thing so just take this down like so and all the way down here till you get a birch wood upside down stair and when you have that all complete that will pretty much do it for the tail rotor 
And now let's go ahead and move into the main rotors. Now we're going to be starting off with the in-flight version. If you are wanting to build the landed version, you're going to want to skip ahead uh, to the landed version. If I remember correctly, I'll put a timestamp to where you want to step uh, or basically skip ahead to to uh, put the learn how to make the weighted rotors. But we're going to be going ahead and very simply doing the uh, you know straight out uh, in-flight version right as right now. So let's go ahead and move on to the in-flight rotors. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to the in-flight rotors. Now, uh, the rotors here can be a little bit complicated, so I'm probably going to be taking some looks back and forth just to make sure I get it completely right, and I don't want to make any mistakes, obviously, so we're going to be doing our very best here. Uh, but obviously, with this kind of odd tri-shape here that we have going on, it can be a little bit tricky to do, so we're going to do our very best to duplicate it. Anyways, to go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down a stone slab full block on top of this uh, anvil like so. On top of this stone slab full block, we're going to place down a uh, redstone repeater with the notches flicked out to the sides like so. Once uh, that's all done, we're going to go out to the sides with one, two, and three slabs out to the side, going toward the front, one, two, and three slabs, and then same thing over here, one, two, and three slabs. Now for the back section here, we're going to go and place down a stone slab right there in the middle. We then want to go and branch out to diagonals from the stone slab block and then just go back and air block back so you have something that looks like this from up above. Once uh, that is complete there, we want to go ahead and switch to skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a row of one and two skeleton skulls right here on the sides. Same thing over here. We then want to go ahead and place down some skeleton skulls in this space right in here. So you may need to place down a block here as a place or a block. We're going to have those stone, uh, those uh, uh, skeleton skulls right in that section there. Uh, once that's done, in this corner piece right here, we want to go ahead and place down a uh, stair for a skeleton skull that's going to be uh, over this block right here. Uh, so like this, and same thing over here. Uh, with that done, we're going to go and place down one and two skeleton skulls coming off these two slabs to the sides. So you have something that looks like this so far. Uh, for this section here, two uh, skeleton skulls off those two stone slab blocks. And then in this corner space here, we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull that's going to be at a 45 degree angle. Uh, which we're going to go ahead and basically do like this. And then we're going to place down two stones, uh, two skeleton skulls going this way. Um, also, uh, we have to replace that green carpet, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. And we just want to do the same thing over here as well. And we're going to place down a skeleton skull right there in that section there. And a green carpet, two skeleton skulls out to the side. So looking at it from above, we should have something that looks like this as the main kind of connection points of the uh, blades to the actual uh, main kind of... Uh, turn shaft or uh, whatever you really want to call it there. Um, anyways, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and basically work on our on our, uh, road, or our blades now. So for our blades, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it will, you know, obviously be a uh, little bit tricky and a little bit of a hassle to do every single one of these blades, um, but we will get through it and uh, have our blades all set up and ready to go. So to begin with, we have this, this uh, first blade here. This is going to be sticking completely straight out. We're going to go ahead and go to this stone slab block that's sticking out, or this row three of stone slab blocks, stricken, stick, sticking completely straight uh, forward like this. And we're going to take our another brick slabs and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen uh, another brick slabs forward, followed by a birchwood slab on the end. Note that these are all half slabs and not top slabs or anything else um, like that. We then want to go ahead and go to the second narrow brick slab, or the basically the, the last one right here. We're going to place down a birchwood slab to the side here. Uh, let me go ahead and get a count to see how much far how far back we need to go. And this is going to be five narrow brick slabs back. So one, two, three, four, and five back. Now once this is complete here, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of uh, narrow brick top slabs. So this is going to be a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, narrow brick slabs back. We can go and break that and we should have something that looks like this for your front blade going forward and that's going to be the easiest blade we're going to be having so in this uh, tutorial. So once uh, that's done there we have our blades out to the sides and this is where stuff starts to get a little bit more complicated um, so let's go and get into it. So for this first blade right here we're going to have to do the blade that comes out to the right side here. We're going to place down one and two narrow brick slabs out to the side. Once that's done, we want to go ahead and go from this slab. We're going to go, and go forward, one block like this, then one, two, and three more out to the side. So you have a row of four. And just to confirm, uh, it is a row of four like this. 
uh, of, of those half slabs. Once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go down from those uh, half slabs here, and we want to go ahead and place down top slabs. So we're going to place down a row of four of top slabs like that across. We're going to go ahead and place down two more rows, just like this one right here. So a row of four of narrow brick slabs coming off those top slabs there. We're going to go ahead and drop down, uh, go forward one, place down a row of four of narrow brick top slabs like that out to the side. And with that done, we're going to place down a row of four narrow brick half slabs like that across. And then we want to go ahead and then place down a row of four of narrow brick top slabs just like that. Now, once that's all finished uh, there, this last row of four is actually going to be uh, two rows of four of narrow brick slabs. So we're not going to go ahead and have them um, top slabs. We want to have something that looks like this uh, going out to the side here. And with that complete, we then want to go ahead and grab our narrow brick slabs. We're going to go off to this one right here. We're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and four out to the side. And uh, it's actually my bag going to be three. So three out to the side, birchwood slab, birchwood slab coming off this one, and then one, two, just like that. So look at it from above, you should have something that looks like this for your blade. Um, looking at it from the side here, this is kind of what it looks like. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and move on to the blade over here on this side. Now this side blade over here on this side is going to be a bit different. So this one right here is going to be two narrow brick slabs coming off this uh, stone uh, slab block right there. We're going to place down a narrow brick, a row of four narrow brick slabs that kind of comes off this one at an angle going toward the front. And coming down from these slabs and going forward one, we're going to place down one, two, and uh, what is going to be a uh, total of four uh, narrow brick top slabs on the bottom here. We're going to go ahead and go back or go toward the front with our narrow brick slab. So a narrow row of four here. We're gonna drop down, place down a row of four of narrow brick top slabs. And not half slabs, we want to place down top slabs. So just like this out to the side. Now once uh, that's done there, we're gonna go ahead and switch to our uh, narrow brick slabs. We're gonna place down one, two, three, and four. And then on these four narrow brick slabs, we're gonna place down four uh, narrow brick slabs coming off of it toward the front. Uh, after that's done, we're going to take our narrow brick slabs. We're going to go ahead and go off of uh, this one right here. I'm uh, going to place down one and two narrow bricks out to the side, followed by a birchwood slab. Come off the birchwood slab and these two narrow brick slabs here. We're going to place down three uh, narrow brick slabs like this across, and then a birchwood slab there on the end. And that's going to do it there for this blade going that way. Now moving on to the blades back here, uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, work on these now. So for these, we're going to go, ahead and go off of this uh, skeleton skull here, or basically kind of at an angle from this uh, stone or sandstone, or sorry, uh, regular stone slab. Uh, coming off that uh, narrow brick slab, we're going to place down two narrow brick slabs back, and then one out to the side like this, so a bit of an angle going on there. Uh, once that's done, we're going to place down another row of two, and it's going to be kind of an alternating pattern, kind of going all the way down here. So uh, we're going to go and do this same thing a few times. So going off this narrow brick slab out to the side two, out to the side one, out to the side two, out to the side one, out to the side two. And we wanna make sure that we go back a total of, we have a total of one, two, three, four, and five uh, sections of these twos going back. Currently we have four. So we're gonna go ahead and go back just a little bit more until we have five of these rows of two. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go off of this uh, row of two here, and we're going to place down a uh, another row of two, or my bad, this one over here. Uh, we're going to place down a row of one, row one, and then the birchwood slab. So we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow brick slab out like this, one out like this, and then a birchwood slab here on the end. Come off this narrow brick slab here, we're going to place down a narrow birchwood slab, off this narrow brick slab, a narrow brick slab, off these two narrow brick slabs, additional narrow brick slabs. And we're going to go and take this all the way forward until we get to this row of two right here. So you have something that looks like that. After that's done, we're going to drop this down to top slabs. So we're going to place down one top slab here. Coming off this narrow brick slab, one top slab, one over. Same thing going back here like this. Going right back here. And it's going to run all the way along, kind of going down and following the outline we just already set up for it. We're going to go ahead and stop when we get to this section right here. And uh, that right there will do it for this blade going backwards like so. 
Uh, after that's finished there, we're going to go ahead and do the blade over here to the last side. This will be the last blade we're going to do for the in-flight version. Um, so for this, we're going to place down a nerve slab coming off this one out at an angle. A row of two like this going out to the side here. And it's going to be a very similar design as we did the last time. So kind of duplicating that uh, design. So we're going to place down one, two, one, two, one, uh, let's see, two. Uh, one, two, one, and we'll do two out there to the side like that. And at this point right here, we can just kind of confirm uh, our placement and see exactly where we are for it so far. And uh, right about there, we can go about another uh, few blocks. So uh, we'll have another section of the ones and twos. So one and two out to the side there. So you can see here we have one, two, three, four, five, and six of these uh, narrow brick slabs kind of working its way out to the side there. Now once that's done, we're going to place down a birch wood slab coming off this slab toward the back, and then one coming off this slab right here to the side there like that. Now on the inside here uh, of these slabs, we're going to go to this narrow brick slab here, place down a narrow brick slab uh, right here, these two, this one, and we're going to take this all the way up until we get to uh, what is going to be uh, this this point uh, right here. So at this point right here, we're gonna go and drop down to narrow brick top slabs. We're gonna place down narrow brick top slabs going across here like this, and following the outline of the rotors all the way along here, all the way up until we get two narrow brick slabs away from connecting back up, and it's gonna stop right there. And once you have that done, you'll have your uh, blades done for your rotors, and your uh, you know helicopter should look something like this from up above. Here's a bit of a side view on how they look and how they kind of go overall. Um, and that's pretty much the uh, build uh, for the in-flight version. With that, we're going to go ahead and move on to doing the landed version stuff. So if you are only here for the in-flight version, you're pretty much good to go for the tutorial. Hopefully you guys do enjoy it and all that fun stuff. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and move into the landed version, which is going to be covering uh, pointing the blades in the landed kind of uh, hanging uh, design and also uh, putting the uh, wheels down. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the uh, landed version with the rotors. Alrighty guys, so going ahead and moving on to the landed uh, version of the rotors. Basically what this is going to be doing is making the rotors, rotors have a kind of weighted feeling to it. So obviously when a helicopter is landed, the blades kind of uh, bend downwards or kind of slant downwards due to the weight of the uh, blades and just the fact of gravity and all that stuff. You guys know basically what you know goes on with that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and be designing those rotors to go on here now. Now for this, we're going to go to this anvil up on top here. We're going to place down two uh, smooth sandstone blocks that go up, followed by a redstone repeater with its notches out to the sides. We then want to go ahead and go from the slab, place down one, two, and three slabs forward. Go to the sides, one, two, and three. And same thing over here, one, two, and three. Now it's very important to make sure that these are half slabs and not top slabs. And also you can have these uh, rope blades that we're going to be building face any direction you guys want. Just you will need to make sure that they are spaced out this way, whichever direction you have it facing. Anyways, uh, to go back to the rear, uh, we're going to go and place down a uh, stone slab like this. Stone slab out to both sides here. And then one slab back like that. So looking at it from above, you should have something that looks just like this. With that complete, we're going to go and then place down a skeleton skull on top of this uh this uh, dark oak wood slab in between these uh, sta uh, stone slabs. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a place our block here and then place down a narrow skeleton skull like this. We then want to place down skeleton skulls on these two slabs here to both sides. And in these corner spaces here, we're going to go ahead and go on top of this uh, slab here, this uh, dark oak wood slab, and place down a skeleton skull in those spots as well. Uh, going ahead and go into these two uh, sandstone slabs, we're going to place down skeleton skulls here on both sides. And going over here on this side, we're going to place down two skeleton skulls as well on the other side. Uh, we then want to go and go to this space right here, and we're going to go and break this green carpet on both sides here and place down a place or a block. On this block, we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull, which is going to be at a 45 degree angle. We can then break these blocks and then place down a green carpet underneath them. We then want to go and just place down two skeleton skulls going forward. So now looking at from above, we should have something that looks like this. Now going off of this, we can go ahead and now put our blades into action. Now uh, I will be taking some looks uh, back and forth here to make sure I do these blades right as they can be a little bit confusing 
uh, with uh, just, you know, especially being slanted and stuff. So I'm going to make sure that we get him uh, as right as possible and everything like that. So for our first uh, blade here going forward, this is going to be the easiest blade to do. We're going to go and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven uh, narrow brick slabs going forward. After that row right there, we're going to go and uh, do a slant downward, and we're going to place down a row of six narrow brick top slabs. So one, two, three, four, five, and six narrow brick top slabs going forward. After that sixth top slab there, we're going to go to a row of three of... Uh, narrow brick slabs, so it's going to kind of dip down here. We have a row of three of slabs, so one, two, and uh, three narrow brick slabs, just like that. And once that's done, we're going to go and place down one slab that goes down. It's a top slab, and then a birchwood slab coming off of it. After that's done on the side of this narrow brick slab here, we're going to place down a birchwood slab out to the side. Uh, we then want to go and grab our narrow brick slabs. We're going to place down one, two, and three come off of these ones. And then one right here come off this slab. After that's done there, we're going to go and do a dip down. Place down a narrow brick slab like this. Followed by one, two, three, and four. Narrow brick slabs going forward. We're then going to go ahead and switch to top slabs. So we're going to place down a narrow brick top slab here. Followed by one, two, three, four. And uh, once we get to, we'll place down a total of uh, five going up here. We should have something that looks like this for our first blade and have it slanting down like so. Uh, with that blade done, we can go and move on to our next blade, which is going to come out to this side. So uh, for this blade here, we're going to go and place down two narrow brick slabs coming off this um, stone slab like so. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and go forward and place down a uh, row of four of narrow brick top slabs. So it's going to be forward at an angle here. Forward, one, two, three, and four narrow brick top slabs like that. After that's done, we're going to go and come down from those narrow brick top slabs. So we're going to go and just come down from them, place down a narrow brick uh, top slab like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, uh, coming out to the side here to give us a total of eight narrow brick slabs along here. Coming off these last four narrow brick top slabs here, we're going to place down a row of four narrow brick slabs, so one, two, three, and four, like that along the side there. Uh, once that's done, coming off those narrow brick, uh, slabs, we're going to go ahead and place down two narrow brick top slabs and then two narrow brick slabs, so going out to the side from this row here, we're going to place down one and two top slabs, and then we're going to drop this down to two nether brick slabs, just like that. Now coming off these top slabs here, we're going to go ahead and place down two top slabs as well, so one and two going forward. And then coming off these uh, nether brick slabs right here, we're going to go ahead and place down two nether brick slabs going downward. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and come forward, uh, we're going to place down a nether brick slab coming off this one, so we have a row three of slabs here. And they're going to place down a slab that goes forward like so. We're then going to go ahead and drop this down a level. So we're going to go from these slabs. We're going to go to a top slab. We're going to place down a narrow brick top slab. Followed by one forward. And then after that, we're going to place down a birchwood slab right here. Followed by a narrow brick slab. And then a birchwood slab out like that. And that's going to do it here for this blade going out to the side. For our next blade, we have this blade that's going to be going out to the left side. And for this one, we're going to start off by placing down a row of two of narrow brick slabs out to the side like that. We then want to go and drop this down to a row of three, or, uh, yeah, this is a row of three, a uh, row three of narrow brick uh, top slabs. So this is going to drop down to a row of three of narrow brick top slabs like this. And then we're going to drop this row down even one more to just a uh, slab. So it's going to kind of come down like this and we're gonna have a narrow brick slab like that now coming off those two uh those two uh top slabs here uh we're gonna place down uh two slabs so we're gonna go and kind of or sorry three slabs so one two and three and then coming down here we're gonna go and drop this down and place down a top slab like this equal to this one off that after off that top slab we're gonna go and place down a row of four of half slabs so uh this right here sorry my bad this is a half slab uh, this is going to be a uh, row of four of top slabs underneath it. So one, two, three, and four out there along the side there, uh, just like that. Or my bad, actually, this is going to be forward here, and this is going to be one, two, three, and four out to the side. There we go. And then with that done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a row four behind this. So just like this, a row four out like that of uh, regular top slabs. After that row of four there, uh, we're going to place down an additional two more. 
tops out, so one and two. And then come off these two more, these uh, additional two. We're going to place down two uh, narrow brick slabs going backwards. <clears throat> or going toward the front, I should say. We then want to go ahead and drop down from these two blocks right here. And we're going to place down a row of two of slabs, followed by a second row after that. After that row right there, we're going to go ahead and place down a slab like this that comes off this one and comes forward. We then want to place down two uh, top slabs that are going to go down. So it's going to be one and two top slabs like this. Going toward the or toward the back here, we're going to place down a birchwood slab, narrow brick slab forward, and then birchwood slab out like that. So looking at it from above, we get kind of something that looks just like that. Uh, with that uh, done there, we're going to go to work on our back ones now. Now for our back ones here, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a narrow brick slab that's going to come off this uh, skeleton skull. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving on to our next blade, we're going to have the blade that goes back this direction here. We're going to place down a narrow brick slab coming off the skeleton skull like this, followed by a row of two back like this, and then one out like so. Coming down from the second narrow brick slab here, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, narrow brick top slab that comes out like this. And then going ahead and coming down from this uh, top slab here, uh, we're going to place down a slab, or a breather slab that's up here at this level like this coming off of it, and then we're going to go and drop down with a uh, narrow brick top slab as well. Uh, once that's finished there, we're going to go and place down a narrow row of two of narrow brick slabs, and then a row of two of top slabs coming off of them just like that. When we get to this point here, we're going to go and place down an additional uh, top slab that comes off this right here. And then coming off this top slab, we're going to go and place down a slab that kind of comes down like so. So one down like that. Once uh, that's done there, we're going to go and place down a uh, row of two of narrow brick slabs like this or narrow brick top slabs we're going to go and place down a row of two narrow brick slabs coming off of it uh, we're going to place down a narrow brick top slab followed by another brick uh, slab just like this going back here uh, when we get to uh, this section here we're going to place down a uh, row of two of narrow brick slabs like this followed by a second row of two after that we then want to go and drop this down at this section here so this is going to be a another brick uh, slab that's going to go down like that. We're going to place down one slab forward. We're going to go ahead and go off of this slab, place down an Arabic slab, fall by one forward. We're then going to place down a row of two in Arabic slabs after that. Uh, after that slab, we're going to place down a uh, another Arabic slab that goes down. So it's going to drop down like this, and then one forward, or one out to the side. Coming back for this one, we're going to place down an Arabic uh, slab, and these are our uh, top slabs. We're going to place down a birchwood slab coming off this one, and this one as well on the sides there. And uh, looking at it from, from above, you should have something that looks like this. Looking at it from the side, uh, something like that. After that's done, we're going to go and do our last blade, which is going to go right over here in this space right here. Alright guys, moving on to our last blade. We have this last blade right here coming off this, uh, this uh, stone slab. So we're going to start off by placing down a narrow brick slab that comes off of it as an angle, or at an angle, out to the side. We're then going to go ahead and go one uh, narrow brick slab back, one more back after this. And on the inside here, we're going to place down a narrow brick top slab that comes down from it like so. After that's done, go back from this narrow brick slab, we're going to place down one out to the side at an angle here, followed by another top slab coming off that slab like so. We're going to go ahead and repeat this one more time, so a top slab down here and a narrow brick slab up here. After this narrow brick slab, we're going to go ahead and drop down to a top slab coming off this one right here. And then off this uh, top slab, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab. So it's going to kind of look something like this from the side here. After that uh, top slab there, we're going to place down a slab back like this. And then we have our top slab right here. Uh, after our top slab, we're going to place down one more top slab out to the side, followed by one coming off of it. And we're going to place down a row of two narrow brick slabs coming off of it like so. Uh, on the side here, we're going to place down a narrow brick slab coming off this row of two of top slabs, followed by one slab out to the side. We're then going to go ahead and place down an air brick slab coming off this slab, followed by one off of it to the side, a row of two after this one following that. We're going to go ahead and drop this down a level and place down a nether brick top slab like this. We're then going to place down a nether top slab like that next to it. We then want to place down a top slab coming off this one, followed by one out to the side. We're going to go ahead and repeat this one and two more times. Uh, after that's done there, we're going to go ahead and drop down again. So we're going to have a uh, top slab that's going to come off this slab right here So like this and then a uh, Top slab off to the side like this 
And then we just want to place down one top slab going forward, followed by a birchwood slab right here, and then a birchwood slab like so. And just to confirm those are slabs just like that. And once you have that all finished there, that will pretty much do it for uh, our blades that are going to obviously go around the, uh, the aircraft. And uh, we can go ahead and pretty much uh, move into our next part of the landed version, which is going to be covering the uh, landing gear. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and move into our landing gear. All right, guys. So real quick, before we move on to the uh, landing gear, I want to go ahead and make one quick adjustment to this blade right here. Now, this blade right here did not come out exactly how it was supposed to. And this is something I kind of noticed uh, after building it that something didn't look quite right. So uh, we're going to go ahead and make a quick adjustment to fix this and get this uh, landing gear looking a bit better. Now, uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to go and basically take this section here and we're going to raise this up. So we're going to basically raise each of these sections up by a slab. So this is going to become uh, what are top slabs. And we're going to do the same thing here with this row right here and this row like this. We're then going to go ahead and go to this section here and this is going to raise this up to half slabs. So this whole section here is going to be half slabs like this. And then we're going to go ahead and place down uh, top slabs again. So this whole section here is going to be top slabs with our uh, birchwood as well and when you have that done everything should line up a lot better now and should make a lot more uh, sense hopefully also this section right here uh, make sure it's like that so this is now what it should look like uh, kind of going across here to give you guys a good angle of what it kind of looks like and uh, with that all done we can now move on to our last final part of the tutorial uh, for the landed version which is going to be covering how to put the landed wheels extended and on so that let's go move on to our last final part of the tutorial all right guys so going ahead and move it into our landing gear now we're going to only do one of the legs here the air wing can easily be copied over to the air side and uh you'll be able to easily complete it but anyways just to go ahead and confirm that everything is structured properly our helicopter fuselage should be sitting one ground or one block off the ground if it is any higher or any lower then it's going to be off and it's not going to sit correctly uh, so make sure that your helicopter is seen correctly and once you can confirm it is then we can go ahead and uh, Get working on it. So for the uh, Landing gear we're going to go ahead and start off by going to our engines here now We want to go ahead and go to this uh, Green stink weight block here to place down an end rod that goes down from it followed by a cobblestone wall over and then another end rod down on this side Now coming off this cobblestone wall going forward We're placed down a sign and we're also going to place down a sign over here on the cobblestone wall in the back here Going down from the cobblestone wall, we're going to place down an additional cobblestone wall block down, followed by a stone brick up down stair here on both sides. After that's done, coming off this cobblestone wall on the bottom, we're going to place down a stone brick up down stair. Uh, underneath that stone brick up down, down stair, uh, we're going to place down a cobblestone wall, followed by another stone brick top slab here directly on the bottom. Now with that done, we're going to place down another brick up down stair next to the top slab, followed by a stair on top of it upside down stair come off the back of this stair and like that to go ahead and create a curved circular wheel shape. Uh, once that's all done we're going to place down a skeleton skull come off this uh, cobblestone wall, lever come off the back of the stair and flick downwards like that. Last thing for us to do is to take some top slabs, you're going to place down a top slab come off this uh, cobblestone wall here followed by a stone brick slab that's going to come off of it like so at a bit of an angle and then we're going to place down one more top slab that goes up like this. Now once that's done there, we're going to switch this uh, dark oak wood slab to a stone brick stair. And once you have that done, that's going to pretty much do it there for the land gear. And also, one thing, also make sure that there's a wheel over here on this side as well. You can go and take the same uh, wheel design, copy it over to the air side, and you'll have your landing gear uh, on both sides. It'll look something like this. Let's go ahead and get it copied over and see what our final version looks like. And once you have the wheel copied over to the air side, you'll have both your landing gear completely complete and uh, your helicopter will be seen on the ground nicely just like that anyways once that's complete that's going to do it for the landed version of the ch37 mojave and that's also going to complete our tutorial hopefully you guys can enjoy this build it's a bit of a different helicopter to do and you know uh type of helicopter that you know really not a lot of people know about but it's definitely a really cool one nonetheless so hopefully you guys can find a use for this helicopter and enjoy it in all your worlds um, but other than that, that's going to pretty much do it for this tutorial. If you guys do end up uh, using this design, I do so you guys give me proper credit for this. Be thankful for the sign of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if there's other paying social media sites. Just be sure you get proper credit for the build. That's all I have for new these tutorials. It helps my channel grow and it continues to keep me inspired to keep on posting these types of videos. So as long as you guys give me credit for it, you're free to use it for projects you guys are working on. 
Other than that, thank you guys all so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Garrett 204, and I'll see you guys next time.